Greetings, my darling girl. You have created an atmosphere of spring. I can see golden blossoms peeping forth all around me. In other words, your letters started me on composing, and I feel as if I should never stop. Here is my little gift. You will grasp its significance. Father suddenly does not want to come with me to Paris, and he says I can go there alone. He says either you give up Schumann or we will stay at home the whole winter. How mistaken all you little people are. You do not know how fast we are bound to each other. Now a hasty farewell, dear Robert. I am terribly anxious about the journey. It's striking 11 o'clock. I am dead tired, and I shall have to travel for three nights. God be thanked I can write to you today, for I did not think I would be able to. And yesterday we were in danger of our lives ten times. It snowed so hard that we had to drive across fields and ditches. How and did I pray to God that he would let us get through it happily. It feels so odd to find myself in a strange city without any man to accompany me. I have to write all the notes on the concert myself, send around free tickets, see about tuners and men to carry the piano, and practice on a bad piano in preparation for the concert a day after tomorrow. I do not know where to begin first. travelling companion, a young and talented girl, Henriette Reichmann, to accompany me. Tomorrow we go to Paris. My dear Robert, Henriette and I are staying with my good friend Emily List and her family for now, Rue de Mathieu, number 43. Emily and Henriette have commissioned me to write and tell you that I can cook a really excellent breakfast and am quite in my element. Emily says, you really will burn your piano fingers. What rubbish the two girls chatter to me about tea, coffee, and heaven knows what, with which I am told to amuse you, you poor fellow. They are now enjoying it. You must often be anxious lest I should not be able to cook. You can be at ease about it. I shall soon learn. Tomorrow I am going into private rooms in the same house where Pauline Garcia lives. I remember when we first met last year. I found her a lovable, unassuming girl with the soul of a genuine artist. She seems to be an exception to all other singers. She takes a vivid interest in music. She is making a great sensation. <laughs> I am weighted down by many anxieties here at my stay in Paris. I cannot help feeling how the French judge everything by externals. People raise their hands above their head when I say I do not have family with me. They say I will not be treated with the proper respect if I do not have an old lady to go into society with and receive callers. This is a real dilemma. The concerts here are terribly wearisome as they last for three to four hours. Over 50 ladies sit round the piano in one tiny room and behave in the silliest fashion. The 
levity, idleness, and coquetry is unbelievable. My concert has been announced in the newspaper. It will take place April 16th. Think of me at 8.30. It begins then. Oh, my nervousness. It increases every time that I have to perform. I do not know how it is. It is extraordinary that all the pianists and performers here have suddenly announced concerts. Do they mean to frighten me out of it? I played at Schlesinger's Matinee and in the evening at Zimmerman's and caused a great sensation, especially in the evening where there were so many connoisseurs present. They called me the second list. It is extraordinary to me that my scherzo is so liked here. I always have to repeat it. Enclosed is a little flower from the bunch which I stuck in my dress yesterday. I believe I should have pleased you. I had on a simple black dress. They like that here. With a white camellia surrounded with small white flowers in my hair. My father has written to say that if I do not give you up, he will no longer regard me as his child. He will deprive me of my inheritance and also of my little capital and will begin a lawsuit against us both, which may last three to five years. Up to the very moment of our union, let us make every effort to prove to him that we shall be able to live as this is the chief ground for his anger. Let us try to soften him in every way, and then if he still will not have it, and he repudiates me, well, I shall be able to justify my actions in the sight of God. When I think it over carefully, it seems to me that I no longer have parents, for I hear of very little love from home. 